Next Sunday is our Love This Place gift. Are you excited? This is a special gift that we receive each year to help us give back and bless our community and also be a good testimony to our community about how we take care of our facilities. And our goal this year is $75,000, which is completely nuts because we're right in the middle of a pandemic. But your generosity never ceases to amaze me. And just remember that it's not equal giving, but it's equal sacrifice. Not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. Some could give $1,000 and not miss it. Some given $100 would be a huge sacrifice. So just let me encourage you to give generously and to give sacrificially. Our drive through trunk or treat is this Saturday night. Many of you have signed up to help. If you haven't, you still can. And thank you to all of you who are going to help put this on so we can be a blessing to families in our community. A study through the Gospel of Luke. Today is part 74. And the cool thing about this study is we're looking at the teachings of Jesus as recorded in Luke, and we're trying to be true to the text. We're trying to see what Jesus is saying to us today and then how we can apply that to our everyday life. And it's not just knowledge for knowledge's sake, but we hope that this facilitates real life change through Jesus from the inside out. So our text today is Luke 20, verses 41 through 44. If you want to follow along in your Bible, your smartphone, your tablet, Luke 20, 41. Then Jesus said to them, How can they say that the Messiah is the son of David? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord declared to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And David calls him Lord. How then can the Messiah be his son? And ever since Jesus was born, he has been challenged, he has been questioned about whether or not he is God. And there are some people today who would say that Jesus is just a good man. He might have been a good man, but there's nothing more to it than that. He's a man maybe a good prophet. And that belief might seem harmless to some, but if Jesus is not the Son of God, then the Scriptures are a lie. And if Jesus is not the Son of God, then Christianity is a lie. And if Jesus is not the Son of God, then we do not have a Savior. Everything hinges on the deity of Jesus. Now, false religions and cults will try to minimize that and try to leave out altogether the deity of Jesus. The Jews expected the Messiah to be strong and powerful and would come in and destroy their enemies and set up the kingdom of God in Jerusalem. And since Jesus did not do what they thought he should do, they rejected him and denied him. Because Jesus claimed to be God, he was accused of blasphemy, which in their eyes is the worst sin anyone can commit so they hated Jesus and because of that they wanted to put him to death and in our study today we're in the last days of Jesus' ministry on earth this is happening on a Wednesday and Jesus will be crucified on Friday this is Jesus' last time to talk with the religious leaders and time after time they had tried to trap him by questioning him and getting him to incriminate himself. But time after time, the religious leaders failed at doing that. And today, Jesus is asking them a question, an important question. And how this question is answered has eternal consequences for each person. Verse 41, Then he said to them, How can they say that the Messiah is the son of David. Now, it would be fair to wonder why Jesus would even bother to talk with the religious leaders two days before they're going to crucify him. And we can get some insight by looking at the Gospel of Luke, uh, the Gospel of Mark, who tells the same story from another view, from another perspective. Mark chapter 12 and verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard Jesus arguing with the Sadducees. And seeing that Jesus gave good answers to their questions, 
he asked Jesus, which of the commands is most important? And Jesus answered, the most important command is this. Listen, people of Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second command is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There are no commands more important than these. The man answered, that was a good answer, teacher. You were right when you said God is the only Lord and there is no other God besides him. One must love God with all his heart, all his mind, and all his strength. And one must love his neighbor as he loves himself. These commands are more important than all the animals and sacrifices we offer to God. When Jesus saw that the man answered him wisely, Jesus said to him, You are close to the kingdom of God. And after that, no one was brave enough to ask Jesus any more questions. And after Jesus said, You are close to the kingdom of God, he then asked this question. How can they say that the Messiah is the son of David? The Matthew account of this same story asks the question this way. In Matthew twenty-two forty-two, 42, Jesus questioned them. What do you think about the Messiah? Jesus asked one of the most important questions ever asked because our eternity depends on how we answer that question. What do you think about the Messiah? In other words, what do you believe in your heart about the Messiah? Why would Jesus bother to ask the religious leaders this question two days before they nail him to the cross? It's because Jesus never lost sight of his mission. He knew they hated him. He knew they had rejected him and despised him. But he never lost sight of his mission. He had given his whole life to love people, to help people, to heal people, to accept people. But the reason he came was to fulfill his mission. And we see his mission in Luke 19.10. The Son of Man came to find lost people and save them. Now that's what Jesus said. And that's what he meant. It's important for us to help the poor but that was not Jesus' mission. It's important to help the sick, but that was not his mission. Jesus remained on mission. The Son of God came to find lost people and save them. And in the same way, Argyle must remain on mission. Our mission is leading real life change through Jesus from the inside out. And Jesus saw that some of the religious leaders were very close to the kingdom of God. And Jesus never lost sight of his mission, which was to bring people into the kingdom of God. His compassion for us is huge. His grace for us is amazing. His patience for us is beyond our understanding. And his unconditional love for us cannot be described all of the way to the cross Jesus continued to give opportunities for people to repent and believe even to the church people who ought to know better nothing gives God more joy than seeing real life changing people from the inside out Jesus never lost sight of his mission Luke 15, 7, Jesus said, I tell you, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes his heart and life than over 99 good people who don't need to change. God's joy is not complete as long as there is still another person who has not repented or believed. Heaven has already rejoiced over each of the 99 
as each one chose to follow Jesus. There has already been 99 heavenly parties. God is waiting and looking for one more. And as Jesus was trying to reach the religious leaders one more time before he was crucified, he saw all kinds of expressions in the crowd, just like the expressions we have here today and those of you watching online have. The expressions on some faces is cold and hard. They've said no to Jesus so many times. Who does he think he is claiming to be God? He's just Joseph and Mary's son. He's just a carpenter. He might be a good man. He might even be a good prophet, but that's all he is. That might be where some of us are today. How would you answer Jesus' question? What do you think about the Messiah? And then there are expressions on other faces that say they are close to the kingdom of God. Jesus can see that you are beginning to get it. You hear his words, and not just with your ears, but with your heart. And you know that God is seeking you and reaching out to you with his arms of unconditional love. Heaven is getting ready to throw another party because one more person is about to join the family of God. What do you think about the Messiah? And you are beginning to understand that Jesus is not a way or he's not another way. Jesus is the only way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. So what do you think about the Messiah? Jesus said there's only one way. But some of you would think that that's not fair. What about the people who believe in something else? What about the people who've never heard? And scripture is clear. Every one of us is accountable to God. We don't understand exactly how it works, but Scripture tells us that God reveals Himself to everyone, even through nature. Romans 1.20 There are things about Him that people cannot see. His eternal power and all the things that make Him God. But since the beginning of the world... Those who have been easy to understand by what God has made. So people have no excuse. God puts in everyone's heart the ability to know him. God's ways are beyond our ways. And God's presence is made known to us in many different ways. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 God has given them a desire to know the future. He does everything just right and on time. But people can never completely understand what he's doing. Our problem is not a lack of knowledge. We don't need more and more Bible studies. Most of us only actually apply a small percentage of what we already know we should do. So our problem is not a lack of knowledge. Our problem is a sinful heart. Our problem is not that people have not heard. Our problem is that they have rejected what they have already heard and seen. When you look for God, you will find God. Deuteronomy 4, 29. But even there... You can look for the Lord your God and you will find him if you look for him with your whole heart. But the Apostle Paul tells us the sad reality. This could well be our biggest problem today. Romans chapter 3 and verse 11. There is no one who understands. There is no one who looks to God for help. What a sad statement. 
So instead of arguing about what happens to those who haven't heard, we should put our energy into inviting our friends to Argyle and sharing our story of real life change with others. It's only by accepting God's free gift of grace by faith that we can be forgiven of our sin. In John 3, 36, Jesus said, Those who believe in the Son have eternal life, but those who do not obey the Son will never have life. John 5, 37, Jesus said, And the Father himself who sent me has given proof about me. You have never heard his voice or seen what he looks like, but his teaching does not live in you because you don't believe in the one the Father sent. In John 8, 24, Jesus said, So I told you that you would die in your sins. Yes, you will die in your sins if you don't believe that I am he. Jesus asked, How can they say that the Messiah is the son of David? Jesus asked, What do you think about the Messiah and this is what the Apostle John thinks about the Messiah in 1 John 2 22 who is the liar it is the person who does not accept Jesus as the Christ this is the enemy of Christ the person who does not accept the father and his son whoever does not accept the son does not accept the father but whoever confesses the Son has the Father too. Jesus asked, how can they say that the Messiah is the Son of David? And what do you think about the Messiah? This is what the Apostle Peter believed. Acts 4.12 Jesus is the only one who can save people. No one else in the world is able to save us. Why is Jesus the only one who can save people? Because Jesus is the only one who lived a sinless life. Only Jesus is the Son of God. Only Jesus is the promised Messiah. So it's only Jesus who can save us from our sin. Verse 41, Then he said to them, How can they say that the Messiah is the Son of David? All through the Scriptures, The Messiah is called the son of David. The two blind men called out to Jesus and said, Have mercy on us, son of David. The Canaanite woman cried out to Jesus, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. The crowd shouted out to Jesus as he arrived in Jerusalem, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There is no doubt that Jesus was from the family of David. The genealogies of Joseph and Mary prove that. None of Jesus' enemies ever questioned if he was an ancestor of King David. But Jesus was not only David's son. The true testimony of who Jesus is comes from David himself. Luke 20, verse 42 For David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord declared to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. David calls him Lord. How then can the Messiah be his son? If Jesus was just any other man, then why would David call him Lord? Jesus is the only one who was both David's son and David's Lord. That means Jesus is completely God. And at the same time, he is completely man. That truth is impossible to explain. And it's impossible for our human mind to understand. So we believe it by faith because that's how big our God is. John chapter 1 and verse 1 In the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Greek word is logos, which means communication. It can also be translated message. Here it means Jesus. 
God told the people about himself through his son, Jesus. And that's explained to us in verse 14. The word became a human and lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only son of the father, and he was full of grace and truth. Jesus' answers were so full of grace and truth. This is how the religious leaders responded in verse 39. Some of the teachers of the law said, Teacher, your answer was good. No one was brave enough to ask him another question. So what's our bottom line today? Even though Jesus lived a perfect life in every way, even though Jesus lived a life of love and grace and kindness and compassion, and even though his enemies could not refute his words or deny his power, most of them chose to reject him anyway. But that does not mean that we need to make the same mistake. Jesus is asking you today, how can they say that the Messiah is the son of David. Jesus is asking you today, what do you think about the Messiah? It's the most important question that you will ever answer in your life. Let's pray.